Look at that. Good to see everybody. We're streaming live right now on uh, the Migrate Potential community page. And it's just such an honor to be here with all of you today. Um, so good to see so many people joining us on the live Zoom for this edition of what we call the Pearls of Wisdom. Um, once again, just gonna let you settle in. We are streaming it live, so a lot of people are gonna be watching it over there. Um, but it's just such an honor to be with all of you today. Um, so let me just tee this up. Um, once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. JC Dornick. I am a certified health coach with Optavia. I'm also a licensed chiropractor over in New York. And, um, you know, we just have this really, really great honor today um, to have a special guest with us on what we call the Pearls of Wisdom. So very often in the Optavia client community, you know, what we do is we just find these amazing leaders from the field and they just come share their stories. And for anybody here that's been with us through the Pearls of Wisdom, you, you know what that's been about and you've just had such a wonderful time. But this is really, really special. Um, I, wanted, I wanna make sure that I do a great job of teeing him up because this is actually my mentor, you know, and I, and I come from a world where I never allowed anybody to, to mentor me. And that, that's because of in my past, I was always trying to hide my truth. And this man came into my life and just dramatically changed my life. And he's actually gone on to help so many people. So I wanna do a really good job of teeing him up before we interview him and allow all of you to get to know this incredible human being. So a couple of things that you need to know about our special guest on the Pearls of Wisdom. Um, he was actually one of the first 10 board certified critical care physicians in the world. So he was actually part of the movement of creating that very field. Um, but what's interesting about Dr. A, and you'll hear probably a little bit more about his story, is he actually picked up and left. Um, I don't know if I would say it was comfortable, but he was doing real well. And he had, you know, it, it got in the way in other, li other aspects of his life, but he picked up and left that um, because he critically cared. You know, he critically cared about what he saw as the true upstream cause of disease. You know, he was in that field of critical care, but he saw something else happening. And you'll hear him talk about it, but, you know, he, start, he, he spoke about, you know, the true cause of disease being things like emotional mismanagement, which we all know too well right now, and also lifestyle and habits. In fact, one of the first things that I heard him say that really caught my attention is he says, the doctor of the future, because I practiced as a doctor, the doctor of the future will focus on the true cause of disease, and that was lifestyle and habits, right? So he co-founded Optavia that we all love so much, um, and he developed this groundbreaking system that all of you know called the Habits of Health Transformational System. He's also a best-selling author of some of those books, um, unbelievable what he's accomplished there. I don't know how he gets it all done, um, but he's also the father of just two just amazing, just beams of light, you know, Samantha and Erica, and just, just unbelievable. And um, more important than all of that stuff, he's, he's a visionary leader. He's, he's a world thought leader. And uh, he literally, you know, he's been talking about it ever since I met him. He's been talking about changing the world and getting the world healthy. And, um, you know, every single day that goes by, I realize that it's not actually something that's going to happen. It's something that's happening. So without further ado, my honor and privilege to welcome, which, and it appears that he's on his boat. Are you on your boat right now, Dr. A? Yeah? Uh, yep. <laughs> so he's on his boat. Um, I guess I guess that's where Dr. A, Dr. A, did you get stuck on your boat during quarantine? Have you been on the boat for two months now? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Dr. A, um, let me just tee this up and let you know who we have here. So we've got a, a decent group of people on the Zoom, but a lot of people are watching this live. Um, and the purpose of this, this edition of the Pearls of Wisdom is obviously we want to pull a lot of stuff out of, out of you that, you know, you know, that wisdom, but we also want to get, give people the opportunity um, to get to know you because we've got people on here that are you know, been around almost as long as me. We've got coaches, we've got clients that have been completely transformed. We also have new clients, new coaches that are just brand new that know of you, but didn't have the opportunity to sit with you this way. But we also have guests that are, you know, coming to check this out. Because as you know, you know, we had this unbelievable ground, groundbreaking event this weekend, which, you know, I think some of those videos are 
being seen like almost 115,000 times. A couple more people found out about you, so they're here too. So um, I just think, that, you know, one of the things that I want to do to make sure that they have that opportunity is, you know, there's everybody kind of knows the formula for success, but very, very few people take that road, that road less traveled. If you could just kind of take it back a little bit, um, you know, B, B, O, B, B, yeah. And just tell us a little bit about your, when you're in, in, the, in your medical field and then you made that decision to leave with the family and how you came to Oregon. Yeah, thanks, JC, and, and welcome everybody and happy Friday. We can't say, thank God it's Friday, since every day is the same uh, right now in our country and uh, hopefully everyone is being safe and healthy. Um, yeah, no, I, I, um, I love critical care. I, I really like taking care of people. Uh, I trained at Jackson Memorial during the cocaine cowboy boys here down in Miami. And, um, I, uh, got really great training. One of the best in the world trained me. Uh, in fact, when I went to uh, interview for my fellowships, everybody that I interviewed trained underneath, uh, Dr. Savetta in Miami. And so I, they said, if you can get in there, that's where you want to go. So that's, I worked on that. I actually, just to show you, I am pretty tenacious. I was at Cleveland Clinic uh, doing open hearts. And uh, over the holidays, I called up and Savetta said he was on call on New Year's Eve. And I happened to have four days off. So in the middle of a snowstorm on, the, I think it was the 30th, I drove nonstop from Cleveland to Miami. Just got there just in time for the evening to spend the evening with him in the ICU. Then I had to drive back the next morning uh, nonstop. And then I had an open, three open heart surgeries the following day. So, you know, people say, how are you so successful? Because you put in the work, you know, you do the work, you, you, you take the time. And when you want something, <clears throat> figure out first what you want. And hopefully, you know, for all of you on the, on the line today, whether you want great health, great well-being or combination of that if you want to help people you know what we do in Optavia is designed to be able to organize your life around what matters most and so what I noticed was that, uh, once I got married in the first four or five years Lori and I we traveled and had a lot of fun and then we had babies and I realized my babies were these little creatures that we were both putting in uh, a daycare going to work these long hours Lori was a nurse anesthetist and we'd work long hours and uh the babies, you know, I wouldn't get home many times to, you know, I worked about 80 hours a week on average. So I wouldn't get home till late at night if I was lucky enough to get home at all. And the babies were like little mannequins in a crib. And I said, you know, this isn't ideal for me to be a dad. That was the first thing. The second thing was I noticed that I was putting, I was kept like pulling, the, you were talking about the river analogy. I would like pull the bodies out of the river, save them from dying. But JC, I never helped anybody get healthy. You know, I, I it was, uh, it was a, uh, a love, you know, I loved it. It was fun. I got to say, I was a hero. I got to save the day and I was really good at it I, as the director of critical care. In fact, the nurses had a kid around, they had tattooed on their chest. If I were getting an accident, please call Dr. A because they know that I wouldn't give up. And that's kind of been, but I finally decided, you know what? And, and I said, I want to go get people healthy. So I left it all, went out to Oregon. Um, didn't really know how I was going to do it, but started working on it and it took two years i lived on credit cards for two years in fact it was so bad that i was writing the the credit cards have like little checks you can write with them i was writing a check from one credit card to another just to pay the minimums i mean that's how bad it was but and i didn't tell laurie or the kids and actually at the same time even though we didn't have any money we had a ball because you know we had enough time the kids were home laurie was with them i was uh, working at a home it was the beginning of working at a home uh, when I wasn't uh, traveling and lecturing around the country. And that's where it started. And then beautiful people like you came along. And now we've grown to the point where uh, we're really changing. We're changing the world. You know, we've helped uh, probably close to 2 million people now. Uh, we're now in Asia, which you're a big part of leading. Uh, and we're, we're on the precipice, I believe, with this, uh, this current crisis to be the, the go-to for people for their lives. First of all, psychological security, you know, as a whole, because I've been working a lot on the mind and emotional mismanagement, as you said, um, our coaches during this are handling it so incredibly better than the general population. They know to stop, challenge and choose. They know to be above the line. They understand what they can do and what they can't do. And they're having amazing gratitude for the power they have to help other people create health in their life. 
Yeah, I saw, I, I saw you, uh, you, you texted some of the leaders something, and I don't have it in front of me, but you, you referenced the fact that we're creating a psychological safe house. Or what, what, what safe, was safe, safe haven. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. So, Dr. Ray, you, you know, I know that you're constantly uh, probably just pinching yourself about just all these people listening live right now or watching this as a video that have been completely transformed by this thing that was an idea back then and there was this big risk. I want to ask you a specific question that I know a lot of them are interested in because you didn't just partner with this, with this company, you know, Metafast and, and find that component, but you came up with this idea of these four components and everybody knows that's the recipe for success. But how did you first come up? A lot of people are asking like, how did he do that? Like, did he just pick that out of the sky? Because even though it was like known, nobody put it together like that. How did you come up with the four components as the solution? Great, that's a great question. I don't know if anybody's ever asked me that before, but um, well, when I, when, I, when I left critical care, and look to see, okay, what are the things that, why are people getting sick? Uh, why are people, what's the main reason? And the main reason was lifestyle, obviously. But one of the side effects of that is obese, uh, overweight and obesity. And, you know, at this point, 70% of people, which is over two thirds of the population in the United States are overweight or obese. So it's a huge problem. It's not a little problem. It's a mega problem. And when I first looked, it was really interesting because I discovered that diets don't work. 85% of people that lose weight gain it back within two years if they're lucky to lose weight. Uh, and actually, the statistics show that if you've been on uh, diets before, you're more likely to be overweight. So clearly, that's not the solution. Um, but I looked at the National Weight Control Registry just to see what did work. And it was a compendium of, because as a physician, I don't want to just you know shoot in the dark or just make up stuff. So I, I looked at the research there was. And in the National Weight Control Registry, they talked about medical triggers. And they said that they found that over the, uh, so the, the weight registry is people that have lost at least 50 pounds and kept it off at least six years. So these are people that have sustained weight loss. And one of the commonalities, people that were successful, uh, the group of, had medical triggers. And what I mean by that, they had had a heart attack or a stroke or something that rocked their very psyche. You know, they almost died. And because of that tremendous effect on them, they made the decision to stay healthy and they got healthy. Well, I realized, heck, we don't want to hear. I'm not going to have much of an audience or help very many people because when that happens, they got to go to the ICU. And I just left the ICU. So I, and I knew that wasn't the answer. So I first picked the fuelings. Uh, the Metafest is the parent company because I knew portion control meal replacements help people lose weight safely and effectively. The dig on, on Metafest to that point was that it didn't teach you lifestyle and it didn't teach you how to eat healthy. So you'd go on the program. You'd lose weight, and then you go off the program, you gain your weight back. Pretty much everybody. So I said, okay, well, this is a tool. This is a tool I can use because if I can have people lose significant amount of weight in the first two or three weeks, it creates the teachable moment because they feel better. They have more energy. Uh, their friends are saying, wow, did you cut your hair? You look great. Uh, and so it was that moment where rather than a medical trigger, it gave them that space where they were feeling so much better. They said, you know what? This I like. The key part then was realizing, okay, if they just go on this program and they, this is all they do, they're not going to be successful. So I knew, I knew in, the, in the very beginning they needed help. They needed support. And there's lots of studies coming out of uh, Stanford and, and UCLA showing that if you change the underlying structure, you can change the behavior. So that's one thing. The second thing is with support, people that had significant support, like they went to, they went to Duke to their clinic or went to some of these weight loss uh, centers while they were there they got better right under supervision in a different structure and a different situation they got better but as soon as they went home back to their refrigerator their lovely refrigerator they started gaining their weight back so i realized that i needed to create a virtual system where people from the comfort of their home could have everything they need to be successful so obviously you know and Lori was the first coach and we started experimenting with that and I built a, a system of how to coach to that. And we noticed that people were staying healthier. The next step was Be Slim, which was an acronym for six key areas, uh, which were simple things. <clears throat> They're kind of like micro habits that start the process. Uh, and the B stands for uh, breakfast, eating breakfast, which, by the way, was one of the keys in the National Weight Control Registry. 
Second E exercise, obviously. Once people, that's the other thing. You can't really lose a lot of weight, especially as a female with exercise, because it creates compensation and then you eat more. And because it takes, you know, 3,500 calories per pound, you'd have to run a marathon to lose a pound, right? So you're talking about a lot of energy and because of compensation and overeating that because you're so damn hungry, that it, that's not a great way to go. The third is S, support. L was for lean, uh, five to six lean, green, lean and, and fuelings. And then the I was for an individual plan. We needed to customize for the individual. And the last M was for monitor to put on like a tight fitting pair of jeans and try them on once a week. And if you have to get on the bed, you know, grunt to get them in them, in them, then probably then you need to be closely monitoring what you're doing and change your behavior. So that's how it started. And as I went along, I realized there were multiple things. People, it's hard for someone to do just one thing. So like as I mentioned, being a diet enthusiast is uh, trying to do it with one thing. Exercise enthusiast, one thing. I, I realized that there's a bunch of smaller things, huge things overall. They're the things that make the difference. But individually in baby steps, by doing baby steps or micro habits, is, which I evolved to create, that was how you could create drastic change in small little increments. And through the halo effect, when you work on one habit, the discipline of that actually reframes your brain, your, your basal ganglia and the way you're thinking, and you're more likely to do other good things. So it becomes additive. So the, the structure, the community came from uh, the work on uh, you change the underlying structure, you change the behavior. Getting around role models, getting around like-minded people, that was important. The other part was changing the orientation. Americans in the world in general, especially during times like this, are problem solvers. They're trying to get away from a problem. But solving a problem doesn't create anything for your life. What we want to do is have people take responsibility and create optimal health. And so people say, oh, yeah, I like prevention, too. Or doctors, I would talk to you, say, yeah, I'm into prevention. I'm not talking about prevention. Yeah, you prevent disease, but we're talking about an active process of pursuit of health and well-being. It's a process. So why are the leaders and why are our coaches, you know, for all of you on the line, if you notice uh, your coaches and your leaders, they're, they're so upbeat and they're so positive during this pretty dramatic and serious event going on in our lives because they've been trained. They've been to the mental gym. They're learning uh, the habits of healthy mind. And we have a whole bunch of process that, you know, I spent the last five plus years really developing so that we have what we need to have our mind become emotionally agile, be able to think with precision. And to you, the first thing you said to me was, you know, you're so successful. What's the key to that? The key to that is being able to focus on leading from the future of what you want to organize your life with and then go to work on it. You know, the reason why I, the reason why we're here and there was a lot of adversity. I mentioned the one. It wasn't just the financial thing. I live on credit card. There were multiple times over the years uh, that pretty most most people would have quit because there was such adversity manifest at four channels. You know, it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to bore you with it, but. The point is, I wanted this. I wanted it bad. It's kind of like, you know, you, you know, uh, you know, we all know winners, Michael Jordan. We know, and I'm not saying I'm Michael Jordan, but I'm telling you something. Those people, uh, their minds are set on what they want, and there's nothing that's going to take them off that track. And, you know, it's been, it's not like they go, whoa, God, you're so lucky. Well, it's not an overnight success. It's been two decades. Well, that's for sure. And I, I've, I've been around for 14 years, so, um, and, and, and I'm just a baby compared to this, you know, this thing that he's gone through. So, um, you know, two things that you said I just want to reflect on because I think it's important that people know that, you know, when I first came in here, I, I went on a diet, you know, before I even met Dr. Ray. I was, I was practicing as a chiropractor. I had a very successful practice, but I had no life. But I wouldn't tell anyone that. So... You know, before I met Dr. A, um, you know, as a chiropractor, what I was really good at was prevention, right? I would do something so that somebody could prevent something. And I was real proud of that. But I heard Dr. A say something that really, really stopped me dead in my tracks. And he mentioned it. But even as a chiropractor working on a natural, effective approach of prevention, I never used the word creation ever. You know, so I had this conversation with Dr. Ray about healthcare, which is really not healthcare. Um, and he says, nobody's creating health. And it's interesting because I practiced and I had one of the larger practices in the, in the country. I practiced 
chiropractic for 16 years. And I, I can effectively say that I help more people in one month as a health coach with creation. So that's pretty amazing. And the other thing was, when I looked at the science behind the four components, another thing that caught my attention, because I read that I think there was some sort of statistic that said like 85% of people failed at diets, which I knew, but all I could see is that 15% succeeded and Dr. Ray created this whole thing based on these success rates. So I was going to do it. Dr. Ray, I want to I jump in a little bit because we got a lot of clients and we've got a lot of people that are in contemplation, you know, whether it's people just checking out the idea of getting healthy. You know, a lot of people always take a big, big, long, deep before the plunge. Sometimes they keep taking that um, breath before the plunge. So I want to talk a little bit about contemplation um, and also maybe um, jump into your amazing book that I rock my world, Identity. He wrote a book called Identity. Um, a little bit about the phases of contemplation. So people could phase place themselves, but also this notion that you need to believe in yourself and be motivated in order to get started. You could jump into that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I talk about it in the Habits Health. So the, just for a moment on the Habits Health Transformational System, it's a system, and I always specifically say, I don't say a book, I say Habits Health Transformational System because I wrote a book. I wrote the Habits of Health, Dr. A's Habits of Health. I wrote that 13 years ago. And it was a it was a good book, you know. It sold over a million copies, no advertising. You know, that's that takes it into the point zero one percent of books. There's very few books that sell over a million copies. Um, and then I did a workbook, but it was done from the vantage point of a physician. And I knew a lot about the body. I knew a lot about medicine, but I didn't know how to help the individual create long term success. And so when I wrote the Habit Self Transformational System, I did it as a comprehensive approach that has an app, it has a, a life book, it has the book, and it has the, the website to give people all the assets they need. So from the comfort of their home, they have everything they need. And I reoriented the whole system to be about self-deliberate uh, self-efficacy. So it's designed to help people take control of their life. We know this, when people build self-efficacy, and it's one of my favorite words, because it means that they're not only learning and growing, they're becoming more confident. And so when you, when you become more confident and you have higher skills, you're more successful. And so you need less motivation and more you just do it, right? So that's really good. That's the first thing. The second thing is that to break it down into these micro habits, so I needed all the key six micro habits. But what, what, what you're really asking and what's so important is to get people first awakened. And I actually wrote, uh, before I wrote The Habit Self-Transformational System, I wrote a best-selling book called Discover Your Optimal Health. And that book was specifically designed to wake, awaken people. And it talked about, you know, all the things about the convenience. Uh, you know, it's inconvenient to, you know, to, to, to cook healthy. It's inconvenient. And I said, well, I'll tell you what's really inconvenient. When you've made poor choices for several years and now you're on renal dialysis and you've got to go to a facility three days a week just to remove what you normally would have done by, you know, going to the bathroom and peeing. I mean, you know, the, when you think about it, because people don't spend time looking at the future. We're really bad at doing that. So basically, what we need to do is know that present consequences affect us in micro ways, and then they create the long term. So people know, I'll give you an example. People know they shouldn't be eating a bunch of cheeseburgers. They should be eating healthy salads, you know, and, you know, whether you're vegetarian or a healthy lean piece of chicken or, poultry, or, or, or fish, you know. But the bottom line is they'd rather eat right now because it looks good, right? They want that cheeseburger. But over time, it makes a big difference. And we know that. We all know that. We all know we need to eat healthy. And we know we need to eat more greens. And we need to go more plant-based diet. Everybody knows that. But because when you have that cheeseburger today, it doesn't do anything to you, that's why you go ahead and keep doing it. And then all of a sudden, oh, my goodness, he died of a heart attack. And people go, he looks so healthy. Well, he was eating cheeseburgers and having going to what's that uh, Peter Luger in New York, uh, the famous steak, right? And having a big steak for uh, the CEO, you know, lunch, so to speak. So the bottom line is why that happens is because we don't see the future. Well, what I've done is one of the parts of the system uh, to help people once we awaken them is understand, hey, 
if you really look at it, if you have a cheeseburger, check how you feel when you go back to work. Do you, are you sluggish mentally? Do you feel kind of, ugh? And the answer is yes. So you, and when you have a salary stuff, you feel great. So you've got to take the present circumstances, your actions, exactly what's happening. Now, that's the first thing. This, but the most important thing you're asking about contemplation is someone's in pre-contemplation, they're not ready. And it doesn't matter whether they're 10, 50, 100 pounds overweight, whether they have diabetes or heart disease, it doesn't matter if they're not ready. And if they're in pre-contemplation, they are rationalizing in their brain why they're not ready. It could be that, oh, diets don't work. It could be what we're talking about. They tried 10 diets or they decided, you know what, I'm doing okay. So we've got to get them into contemplation. And how do we do that? Well, when they're in contemplation, they're thinking about it. You know, I, I have a, a cute little joke. I say, you're at a New Year's Eve party and a, your a button flies off your pants and almost kills somebody. And it's your message from God that you need to start doing something. But something like that happens. They go to their doctor. They're told they're pre-diabetic. They're pre-hypertensive. doesn't matter what it is. But something gets them thinking, I should do something. I could do something. Then the next stage is, is the ready decision. And so what we do in Optivia is we awaken them through the stories to the potential of what's possible. And for those people, many of them that were in pre-contemplation, now that are at a healthy weight, they're physically doing great. You know, uh, Dr. Mark Nelson's a good example. He was an overweight cardiologist, big sunken uh, eyes. And now the guy's 70 plus years old and he looks like an Iron Man. I mean, he, you know, he's built and he's able to do all those things. He couldn't possibly do that back then, but now he can because in baby steps, he started doing that. So Optivia, and that's the thing, really, I guess the thing I'm the most proud of, Optivia is for everybody. It doesn't matter, black or white, yellow, green, uh, what country you're from, uh, male or female, it just doesn't matter because we're for everybody. And what's neat about it, as we get healthier, we want you to become coaches because we know this. If you don't love what you're doing, and only 20% of people love what they do, then that's one of the reasons why you are overweight, why you're not feeling so well, why you don't exercise, because you're burnt out or you're just barely getting by. You have low energy level. And you're doing something you don't like to do or you have adversity in your job. And because of that, you basically are not happy. And so that's why you're overeating or not exercising or that's why you have all this mental stress. So bottom line is, hey, we want you to become a coach. We know if you become a coach, you're going to be more successful in your health. You're now reaching out and helping others. I mean, you only want to become a coach if you like to help people and if you want to get healthy. You're not going to be successful just to make money. It just doesn't work that way. Now, our coaches are very successful financially, but they're successful by giving value to the marketplace. Uh, you, you hit it on the head right there. You know, um, and here's something interesting. because From my own experience, you know, I and because I never really understood what, transformation meant until I grasped by going through this program that, you know, as I went through the different phases of it, I actually became a different version of myself. And I started to see things that I used to probably not allow myself to see. Um, so, you know, tie that in with, there's people out there and, I'm, and I know some of them are watching and probably wanting to ask this question, you know, just asking questions that I used to ask, like, well, how come it doesn't work for me? And I'm not saying the program, anything, you know, why, why do I see other people getting different results than me? So if you could just talk a little bit about that concept, a little bit more about the taking aim and awakening concept, because I think a lot of people can't see what is required, you know, as the, the precursor before you awaken, because there's no way that... It, when I, before this program, everybody, I could not see anything that I am today. It, it wasn't visible. I couldn't even dream about it. But as I went through the process, and this is what I want you to speak on, because I know there's some people here that just haven't made a decision, a fundamental decision, as you say, to get healthy, to, you know, free to be and all that stuff. So speak on that a little bit, because I went through it, but I know that you'll put words to it. So the reality is this, you don't have to believe, you know, you mentioned the word believe earlier. You don't have to believe you can get healthy. You don't have to believe you can be successful. You don't have to believe any, you know, people say, oh, you got to believe. No, you don't need to believe you have to do. You have to look and see. And so, you know, I can tell you that your coach, your business coach, your business leader that's been successful, they believe in you because they know it's possible. 
most of them didn't believe when they started, you know, and that's, so that's really where it starts. And, and I have to tell you that we have our story in the, actually, you know, because of that, that's why we have a life book now. You know, you asked, well, how did you come up with all this? You know, I ask a lot of questions. I'm very observant. I don't, I don't ever uh, rest on my laurels. I ask the question every day, how do I help people be more successful? And I continue to be observant. And, and also something that a lot of people don't do, I also cross-pollinate. I and mean, what I mean by that, I look at other industries, other things that have nothing to do with health, but there's things that I see that are successful that we can adapt. So part of the micro habit and building in so that we use my, a micro habit is basically making it so small that you can do it every day. See, there's the one thing being awake in, in making the decision or being inspired because of, like you mentioned, something like last week when we did the business momentum or hearing a talk or maybe listening today to what I'm saying. But every day, see, success doesn't come. It's not, you know, overnight success. That happens in Rocky. It's not even an overnight, two hours, right? He goes from a bum to being a hero in two hours. But we somehow think in life that's how it should be. And it just ain't so. So the first thing is I am brutally honest in myself and in what I teach. It's not easy to get healthy. It's not easy to become optimally healthy. But it is doable. And if you break it down into micro habits, it's you can, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Because it's not about something. You actually set the standards of how small the actual habits you're working on is daily so that you consistently do it every day. Because if you make it small enough, you can do it with no excuse. On those days when, you know, your dog had, uh, poops in your, in, your, in your lobby or your, um, you know, your, you spill the milk all over the floor or one of the kids comes down with a cold when you were going on a spa, bottom line is it doesn't matter. Because on those days, this is small enough, even if you're massively aggravated, you can still do it or you don't feel good or you have a cold or you have a flu and thank, hopefully, thank God, you don't have the COVID. But even if you have that, you can still do little things if they're small enough that you can do them with your motivations level. So that's the first thing. And that's what allows everybody to do this. Plus, we're all human. And going back to you don't have to believe, you know, you don't have to believe in gravity. But I tell you, you go up on top of the Empire State Building you jump off and you're going to see the effects of gravity. You don't have to believe that you're going to get down to a healthy weight using our fuelings. Just take what did you have to believe? No, you didn't have to believe. You just simply every day open up the pack, put it in the bowl, put some water with it, stir it, eat it, have one lean and green with it. Do that five and one and you start losing weight. You don't have to believe you're losing weight. You're going to lose weight. Bottom line is that's how it all starts. It starts that you make the decision because it's coulda, shoulda, woulda. And yet until you make a decision, there's always a great excuse that will work. And going back to your story, you built a story starting when you were a little kid about who you are and what you believe in and who, you know, what you can do and what you can't do. And I got to tell you something, 99.9% .9 of that stuff is a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. It has no bearing on what you can and can't do. You're creating these self-limiting beliefs and making the construct of what you can do and you can't do. And what you do is you start something and because it gets hard, you stop it and say, yep, see, that didn't work either. So absolutely, JC, listen, most of us making the decision to create optimal health and well-being is getting by definition out of your comfort zone. And you know what? Here's the deal. And this is what uh, Discover Your Optimal Health was all about. If you make the decision to work on this in small little steps, you change the trajectory of your life. You become healthier. You become have better well-being. You can handle, you know, dig your well before you need it. Bottom line is right now, our leaders and the people that are using the transformational system that are going through the sections like Element 4, Unhealthy Mind, they are categorically doing better than those that are not. Even those that are not coaches, our clients, our clients. I mean, I have to tell you, we have thousands and thousands of clients that I get emailed or texts from or on Facebook that say, thank you, Dr. A, you helped me prepare for this and I'm doing okay. Listen, is this something we want to go through? Is something we prefer not to have? Absolutely. But the world isn't happening to us. It's happening through us. And what I mean by that is we can, we can deal with this and actually, you know, go through it and we can learn from it and become better. So I'm using 
I'm, I'm using this crisis pandemic and I feel extremely empathetic for people that are, have caught the, caught the virus. And obviously people, you know, remember that's my specialty. The people they talk about that 20% or 10% that need to be in the ICU and the 5% that need to be on ventilators. In Miami, I trained on ARDS. ARDS is a acute respiratory distress syndrome. So I took care of those patients and learned how to do that really well. And that is something you don't want. So I, I empathize, but I can't control that. But what I can control is I can control helping do what we're doing today, JC, talking to these fine folks about taking control of your health and your well-being. I love it. You know, I've been, I've been hearing you talk for almost 14 years now, but I'm Get all these notes and take it. <laughs> take well, it you know, and, and the thing is, you know, uh, and I know you've seen, I've watched you, like you said, tremendously change. I've tremendously changed. You know, I, I don't spend a day, you know, like, yeah, I'm down on my boat right now christening it. Um, but bottom line is, uh, this morning when I got up, basically, I was reading. You know, I listen, uh, I, I meditate now. I didn't meditate 14 years ago when you started. I, I'm exploring consciousness. I'm exploring how do I help people deal with emotional uh, agility? How do we improve emotional agility? In fact, the focus has gone from really focusing on the physical body to much more of the mental mindset. Because the healthy mindset, the growth mindset, the ability to be resilient. So here's the thing. Life is going to happen to us. You're going to break a leg. You're going to get a cavity. You're you know, going to get sick. And eventually we're all going to die and we're going to lose people that are important to us. You know, and I, I went through that just the last couple of years, but here's the thing. Things are going to happen. Life is intrinsically unstable. And if someone thinks we have Pollyanna or Cinderella or Disney world, right? It's just not real. But what is real is life has an incredible appreciation for being alive. And if we take that tack, then everything is reframed in a way, you know, the Stoics, you know, the uh, Marcus Aurelius, you know, the uh, Caesar, uh, Epicus, uh, Seneca, these were the ancient uh, Roman um, leaders, and they developed the philosophy of Stoicism. And Stoic isn't just, you know, being Stoic and, and firm. Stoicism is about reframing things so that the world is here for you, right? Not happening to you, but here for you. And, you know, all I have to say is you get up in the morning and you're alive, man, that's a good, that's a good, a day above ground, that's a good day. And to reframe things like that, I, and listen, I'm not saying it's easy. There's lots of bad things and I'm not being, public. there's a word called that, that would be utopia. What I'm talking about, and uh, the word, most people don't know this word, it actually, this word is another cross-pollination. It comes from technology. Protopia is the constant evolution of a technology so that it becomes better. Well, I believe in our lives, we can constantly evolve our lives for them to be better. And it's important we get on that path because, you know, as I show you in one of the graphs in the Habits of Health, is over time, your body's going to get older, your buffer systems are not going to be as good. Uh, and if you're not focused on creating, not just reacting to what's happened to you, but creating, yes, you're going to end up on medicines, you're going to end up in ERs, you're going to end up in hospitals, because if you're just letting it happen and you're just sleepwalking through life, you're not going to be successful. You're going to, you're, you're, so the, one of the key things is keeping this, this thing right up here, this, this CPU unit in the middle between our ears, keeping that thing focused on the incredible thing each and every one of us has, which is prefrontal cortex, or this incredible ability to think clearly and make good decisions. Yeah, you know, um, just one thing that I've learned from Dr. A and from this program, and also from a lot of the other leaders, you know, what's amazing about Dr. A, what you've created is you've created other thought leaders that have impacted me on the same level that you have as well. So that's how we're going to get the world healthy. One of the things that I learned is that this discussion we're having right now is not just something to learn and to talk about, it's something to practice. Right, it's it's something to go out and practice because we're going to talk here within an hour, right? And right after that, as you know, I always talk about the jacuzzi experience. I'm I'm looking at the chat and boom, boom, boom. You know, everybody's clear right now. But then when we get out, we have to actually go to work and and practice these things. Which no, do, be. No do be. <laughs> That's right. That's as simple that. as that. You got to know the right things. 
that's what the habit self trans that's what the first book did it told you that well, it's, but it's got a lot more now on the mind stuff but first you got to know the correct information you know low fat low carb uh, uh ketogenic prehistoric fasting they're all macronutrient manipulation they have nothing to do with success by themselves they're diets and because they're restrictive things you do you're going to do them for a while and you'll have some success fasting are you kidding me who wants to stop eating after three o'clock for the rest of their life or who wants to eat every other day i mean come on i mean is that no no Let's let me just tell you statistically why knowing is so important to have the right information is by eating every three hours, eating the right things in small increments and having a lean and green. You're eating so that you're not hungry. You're having a normal meal at the normal time with your family and you can do that for the rest of your life. That's the whole key. It's not just can I do, you know, and I always kid around. If you want to lose weight, cocaine's a great way to lose weight, you know. You basically can get all your housework done. You can clean the closet. In six months, you're what? You're either dead or in jail. I mean, the point is, it's not, it's Machiavellian doesn't work. It's not the end justifies the means. It's about doing things that are sustainable so people can do them long term. That's, that's the first part. That's, that's the part that, you know, it's so critical. And so you got to know the right information. The Habit Self Transformational System, I took four years writing that. And I wrote every word. That's not written by a ghostwriter. It's not written by somebody else. It's written by me. And I did the research and I do things. You know, I don't say something unless I know it to be factual. And throughout, if you look at the habit self, the new book, the last 30 pages are references. I don't make this stuff up. I'm not, hey, listen, I'm not a genius. I simply do the work to put down what the facts are in a way that's usable for people. So you got to know first. And so the nice thing about the habit self transformational system, you're not going to get conflicting information. If you go to any magazine, whether it's Cosmopolitan, you know, Ladies Home Journal, whatever it is, you're going to get the idea of the week. Now, I'm not saying some of it isn't accurate, but it's all over the place. And so it, it confuses you. And what ends up happening is a confused mind does nothing. So that's the first thing, knowing. And we, in this system, you are going to learn what you can use. And I go all the way through Ultra Health because it's a system you can use to be at your best and potentially live longer for the rest of your life. Everything you need is right in that system. Be doing is what the micro habits are about. That's what the app is about. It's about doing every day, the accountability of doing every day. The life book is about every day, writing down, going through that thing systematically. And first writing your story. Yeah, you got a good story, but then doing the evaluation, seeing where your story takes you. What are your, what are the levels of health you have? And you'll be very surprised when you do that, that your story isn't giving you exactly what you want. So why stick to that story? Let's build one working with your coach who has a guide that they use specifically to guide them, to help them teach you or guide you, not teach you. You're going to teach yourself, take you through the life book so that by the end of that year, you've rewritten a new story. I will tell you this. You, we can make medical claims, but I will tell you this. If you go through those 26 elements and you do them, you work with your coach, you listen to them, at the end of the year, when you do that same well-being evaluation, your score will be higher, unless you got hit by a bus. But your score will be higher. So, yeah, so that's the doing, to your point, JC, which becomes the becoming. So, you know, we do these things naturally now because habits, by definition, are something you do automatically. Right now, we do a lot of things automatically we shouldn't do. 50% of our day is on autopilot. What we're doing is deconstructing that by becoming awakened. We're using stop, challenge, and choose to help stop the bad behaviors, make better choices. At the same time, we're using the micro habits to now construct or create this new life for ourselves and this new ability to be fully in control of our health and our well-being. I love it. Um you know, I'm going through the chat while you're speaking, and I'm seeing a lot of people, obviously, talk about how their lives have changed. But a lot of a lot of uh, um, praise on life book. But I'd love to hear from you right now. I mean, we had this wonderful experience, and God, if if somebody did not see Dr. A um, present with, with Jim Dethmer, you know, the amazing author of 15 Commitments of Constitution, they just probably been asleep for about five days because pretty much the world is catching fire to that. But Dr. Ray, when it comes to the life book, so this is one of the components, the Habits of Health Transformational System, part of it is the life book. 
and these 26 elements. Could you just speak to the fact or just address the idea of how does somebody, by engaging in that and the four components, how does that help somebody move from that unconscious state to that conscious state, which gives them the ability to see what they need to see? How does that, how does that actually tr um, happen over time? I, I know we say one healthy habit at a time, but the life book has, is having an impact on people where their, their score's not only going up, but along the way, they're becoming a different version of themselves, more clarity, more consciousness. How's that happen? Well, it happens, you know, it, it's going from, and it, it actually, you know, I, I write this right in the first, first part of the life book, but it's basically going from an unconscious incompetent, which means you don't know what you don't know. So you can't, you can't even deal with it because you don't even know it to being a conscious incompetent, which means you're now learning valuable information. So for example, the element on addictive food, right? So as you're, as you're going through and you're on the program and you're losing weight and you're not eating this, all this processed food, you're losing weight. And we talk about before you go tr through transition about your susceptibility index. And so we're teaching you that, you know, a third of the population is highly addicted uh, to sugar. Um, a third is in the middle and a third is not that, not, not that addicted. And, you know, to make the analogy to that, and I use this so people can actually learn what I'm talking about. If you have going back to cocaine, cocaine, the coca bean, basically they eat that in South America, they chew it. And, it's like coffee. It just gives them a mild stimulus. They don't get addicted to it. And it's part of their life. But when you refine it, you crush it, refine it into that white powder, it becomes highly addictive. And it lights up the nucleus accumbens, which is the ple pleasure center in our brain. And boom, it very quickly, you get addicted to it. Well, that's what they do with sugar. Sugar is basically in its normal substance in sugar cane or beets. It's not that potent, but they refine it down into that white powder. And it becomes highly addictive. Same thing with flour. You know, all these things that we've refined into ultra processed food, there's a group of people that are highly addicted to it. So if you didn't know that, you would think, okay, now I'm down to a healthy weight. I can start eating those Cheetos again, or I can have that hot fudge sundae or have that bowl of Haagen Dazs ice cream. And the answer is no, you can't because you're like an alcoholic. An alcoholic basically can't drink. They can't just, oh, I'll just have a little bit. They can't drink any. And so we define that high risk group. So that's the first thing that would be taking an unconscious incompetent to be in conscious competent and then going from a conscious incompetent to a conscious competent would be doing the life book, reading the things, doing the exercises, the doing part so that then over time you become and the become is moving from a conscious competent to an unconscious competent. And what that means is that's the sweet spot. That's what you do with your car. When you were 16 years old and you start driving your car, you didn't know where the accelerator or the brake was. You had to feel and look at them uh, now. And you used to have to, for the turn signals and the, the wheel and parallel parking. There were a million independent things you had to learn. There were small habits that were part of building the ability to drive a car successfully. Now, when you drive a car and you're driving home and you're on your hands-free, hopefully your hands-free phone, you're talking to somebody. And all of a sudden you drive up and you're at the garage. Whoa, how did I get here? You don't even know because you did that. You're an unconscious competent. That's the sweet spot of what we're going to do with you with the life book, with the app, with the Habit Self app, which is on your phone. Uh, that's what we're going to do and then give you the extra knowledge with the book. When you want to learn more about it, when you're curious about something, you don't have to go ask somebody. You can go at the book and the life book are totally synced with each other. You can, If you don't understand the concept, you can go read more about it. So. The whole idea is in baby steps to have a system where actually the client, I designed the system specifically that a client can teach themselves optimal health and well-being by themselves, with their coach, with their community, with the fuelings, they have a much higher chance of being successful. We've just kind of doubled down. Love it. So uh, we're coming to the end of the hour, which... Um... I wish that I could ask about uh, 6,000 more questions. And by the way, there were some, uh, some, some coaches. We're excited about, you know, getting that uh, incentive trip in the Bahamas in November, rescheduled. But some of them um, 
were asking questions to me that they wanted to ask me in the pool in the Bahamas. So I want to give credit to Katya McGuire. She was the one that asked about the four components. I forgot to say that. <laughs> she said, this is what I was going to ask him in the pool. Um, so Dr. That's Ray, a great question. But thank you, Kathy, because that's a, that's a great question. You know, And that's part about this process, about believing. I, 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 just, I decided I was going to do this. I didn't know how to do it. I had to figure that out. You know, so you got to, but you got to have it, you know, lead from the, I have to tell everybody, you know, I'm sorry, but to interrupt you. I just want to say this though, because that's great for everybody on this call. Imagine the future you want and then, and then make the decisions in the present, you know, lead from the future, act in the now. Helen and I, Helen Irwin and I sat in my office, uh, in my home in Annapolis, and we sat for a, a day to create, what are the key things uh, to really success, to be able to lead your own life? And that's one of them. You know, because if you don't know where you're going and you're just reacting to every day, you're not going to get where you want to go and you're not going to be as happy as you want to go. And including, by the way, working on your mind, because if you think the world should be a certain way and you're right, Jim and I had a great talk about that on last Friday night. You, you, you're you're going to be miserable. You ain't so. There ain't no way the world's supposed to be. We'd love to have it be certain ways, but it ain't certain ways. And there's only things, certain things we can control. And like people say, well, you know, that's not a good edge. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you can't do anything. Look what I've done for the last two decades. I've worked with fine folks like you, JC, and are, and built a team of leaders, and we're we're changing the world, and we're and, and it's and significantly making an impact right now, right? So it's not that we don't, can't say we can't control anything, but the one thing we can control for sure, and you, most people aren't going to like this, you don't have control over your outer world. Some of it you do. Right. You can, you know, you can decide what you bring into your house from the grocery store, which is great. That's what we call choice architecture. Bring the things in. They're going to keep you healthy. Don't tempt yourself with things. Don't rely on willpower. So there's certain things we can do. But the one thing you can have to you have total control over is right in here. So that's that's the place. So anyway, that's uh, that's great. And I wish, you know, we'll be in the we'll be in the jacuzzi or the uh, the pool again, guys. Awesome. So. Um... You know, you, you just made me think about something I was talking about this morning was the idea of like, if, if, if I took a, a box full of a thousand puzzle pieces and put them on a table, but I didn't let you look at the picture that was on the box, you'd be in, you'd be in real trouble, right? Because you don't have that, that you don't have the ability to live in the future, right? It's all guesswork. So Dr. A, um, you know, timestamp, because I know a lot of people are going to watch this as a recording, you know, there's a lot of adversity during these unprecedented times and everything. Um, but as, as, as you and I know, there was a lot of th a lot of adversity going on before it, you know, like, like obesity and things like this. So we all know that on the outskirts of this, you know, there's going to be a lot of work to do. And that's why we need so many coaches, right? Good qualified coaches, because it, it, we actually have a mission to get the world healthy but we can't do it without the people listening right now. But what I would love to hear from you, even during this time where so many people are just in that reactive mode, allowing uncontrollable things to control them, what's your vision for the future now that you know where we're going? So, so the reality is this pandemic is gonna happen again. And it's going to happen again because the world's changing and the world's changing, you know, with international uh, flight, commerce, uh, connectivity. Uh, but the thing that's really happening here more than anything is a psychological pandemic. You know, it's it's a fear is being dispersed throughout the world and worry and anxiety and stress. In fact, to the point where, you know, there's going to be an economic turndown once even when we get this virus because of the impact this has had. So people's lives are being disrupted and things are changing. So it's, it's a, an acute example of what I've been saying for a long time is the world is changing at an accelerative pace. And if we don't adapt to it and adopt to the new methodology, we're gonna be left behind. So why, to, you know, to your point about more people joining this, you know, you can join as a client, and that's awesome. We want you, and and just by you getting healthier, you're you know you become a walking billboard for our mission to change the world. But by becoming a coach, you now are part of a up. You know, I talked about this psychological haven. You're in a place where there's lots of positivity. 
I'm, you know, I've, I'm going live on Facebook several times a week and just talking in general about some things you can do right now. And that advice, that community advice is helpful. It's helpful. People say, thank you. know, I look forward to take my mind off of what's going on. And also I'm learning how to do a better job. So I would tell you that Optavia, our mission, what we do is going to be a standard if we're going to actually create a healthier world. And that healthy world includes everything. You know, if you talk about, um, if you talk about, you know, other subjects that aren't about health, but what about the health of the planet, right? During this period, you know, that I, I read that, um, that poem by the, uh, the uh, pastor from, uh, from Ireland. Uh, right now, you know, the, the water's clear. The skies are cleaner. Um, you know, we know that if we eat healthier, we decrease the impact on the planet as well. We know that if psychologically, you know, if we learn, listen, if people learn to be fully present and to not get into their e egos, we could little, and, and this, this is going to take a while because you have to impact everybody, but we can stop wars. We can stop unrest. We can stop prejudice. We can stop so many impactful things. And so why Optivia's mission is so important, because because you are paid. It's not like just going and working for Greenpeace or some uh, charitable organization where you don't get paid and eventually you get burnt out because you're not getting the things you need. Optavia takes care of you first and you take care of you first so that you are then successful to reach out and help others. And that's why, you know, the analogy, I love the analogy because everyone's seen it. Um, uh, they tell you when you get on the aircraft, hey, put your oxygen mask on. If you lose oxygen, put yours on first, then your kids. Right. Because your kid's not going to know how to do it. You know how to do it. But if you put on your kids first, you're going to be unconscious before you get it done. And then you're both going to be in trouble. So the reality is help yourself get healthy and have better well-being and then reach out and help us help the planet. That's 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 mic drop. <laughs> I'm just going to push my mic over right there. Um, Dr. Ray, thank you so much for taking the time. You know, I I, I know that like in one minute, you'll be doing something else like this. Um, what an honor it was to have you here. So many lives are going to be impacted because even if just 10% of these people get what you just said and put it into play and practice it, then this idea of the world being that picture of, uh, of, of this, this compelling future as if it was a puzzle and everybody starts to recognize their pieces of that puzzle and we if we all work together, we're going to get it. So. Um, unbelievable honor and a privilege to have been able to mentor with you and so excited about, you know, tomorrow in a world full of uncertainty and, and fear, you know, just so blessed. Thank you so much. Ab absolutely. I just want to say one last thing. So for everybody on this call, listen, JC has been an incredible uh, loyal partner in this mission. Uh, I've watched him dramatically change. He's now getting ready to settle down with an amazing woman and his life is improving. Because he made the decision, he listens, he's coachable and teachable, and he wants to help you guys do the same thing. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe, be healthy, and hopefully I get a chance to see you soon. Thanks, JC.